Hello. Happy Wednesday. It's my Tuesday and I'm actually watching Scream 3 in the background. Uploading my booktube video and I'm getting ready to go. So I'm not gonna leave. Uh, maybe I'll come back on Hold on. Live stream later. I'm getting ready to go on you now for just a little bit. It is a beautiful day outside, can you guys see? So pretty outside today. Um I don't ever go on you now live like during the middle of the day, so I thought since I said I was gonna do that and I never do, I'm gonna try to go on it today during the day for just like an hour. We have marriage counseling. I had my counseling session for myself earlier today. Um, it was fantastic. I had such, we're talking about, I'm actually working with my counselor on achieving like my dreams and that's what we're working on. And then we have our marriage counseling session tonight. And then I don't know what we'll do. Maybe get dinner and bring it home and watch TV or go to dinner. So I'm not really sure. Um, turn this down just a second. Hold on. Look at my little fella. Hello, PP. Are you taking a nap? He said, yeah, Dad, I'm helping you. He always is, like, right next to me. So, um, I'm going to do that. But I wanted to... First of all, I got like two things from the post office today, so I wanted to talk about them. Got a bunch of mail. These are all of the books I'm reading. Do you see? I have all my tabs for my book to -a I've already finished the Sherry Lapina book. I finished it last night. It was actually really good. I gave it four out of five stars. So I want to thank Mrs. K. You know who you are. You were writing this on the bus. Or on the train, she sent me a Halloween card. I was so excited. So, and she even recommended a Halloween song in there for me. And then I got this box that says it's candles and books. I usually open these before I um, get on camera, but I couldn't open it in my car because I didn't. Have any, oh, I just cut myself on the stupid stove, but I didn't have anything to open it with, so this is not wanting to work really well. Oh, there. Oh my gosh. Oh my god. There's all of these little things on there. Oh my god. Okay, this is very, very cool. So let me clean up my mess here really quick because I have this snow stuff all over the place. Oh my God. I love this. Someone said in like a comment section of a video that I was watching, actually, it wasn't one of my, I, I don't think it was one of my videos. They were, they said they hate PO boxing and openings and things like that and hauls that people do because they feel like it's like um, bragging about what they get. But if I don't show it, I don't feel like it's fair to the person that sends it to me. And if I do send it, then I feel like it's me bragging. So I feel like you're, I'm screwed if I do, if I screw if I don't. So I show it on here out of consideration for the people that send it to me. I think it's super nice, you know? Okay. Okay. Hi, Peter. I work in the book industry. This card is so adorable, first of all. Do you see? It's little ladybugs. I think if in little, little uh, yellow and red ladybugs. Do you see that? How cute it is? I think if I was going to get a tattoo, maybe I'd get a little ladybug right there. I used to want to get a tattoo of my mom saying something and my dad saying something right there, but I probably will never get a tattoo. Um, hi, Peter. I work in the book industry, and I got an advanced copy, advanced reading copy of this crime novel. I love it, and I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I did. Hello. Oh, hello to Alex P.P. Tucker. She spelled P.P. correctly. It's P.P. And so many people, like, it doesn't matter, but. Oh, hello to Alex P.P. Tucker and Boo Radley. P.S. I'm listening to your October 3rd vlog from a subscriber in Perth, Australia, Bib. Hi, Bib! 
PBS, wishing you an early Merry Christmas too, as I am sending this package early to avoid the holiday rush. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Okay, so she sent me two candles from the Wickstock Com Candle Company. One is called um, Good Morning Sunshine, freshly ground coffee and orange peel. These are really cool little tins. I love these little tin coffee things. Oh my God. I can totally smell the coffee and the orange in it. Oh my God, that's crazy town. Alex is gonna love that one. And then um, a lever's eggs, waffles, and make maple syrup. I will love this, but Alex won't watch. Because he doesn't like cooking smells. I love all cooking smells, which you guys know by now. Oh, I'm so hungry. Oh my God, that smells fantastic. Just a little candle like that. You know, I was watching all these candle communities. Thank you so much, Bib, for those two candles. I was watching all these candle company reviews. Do you guys do the candle reviews? I'm like so have fallen down the rabbit hole of candle reviews on YouTube. I don't know why. But like they only talk about like Yang. They talk about like the same three brands over and over and over again. And I'm like, there are so many brands of candles out there. Why are we reviewing the same one over and over and over again? Okay. So the advanced copy that she sent me is called The Ruin by Dervla McTiernan. Uncorrected copy, not for sale. I'll read you the back of it. Um, Cormac Riley, Riley is about to reopen the case that took... Oh, she me you messaged me about this. Reopen the case that took him 20 years to forget. Responding to a call that took him to a decrepit country house, young Garda Cormac uh, Riley found two silent, neglected children, 15-year-old Maud and 5-year-old Jack. Their mother lay dead upstairs. Since then, Cormac's had... So Cormac's had 20 high-flying years working as a detective in Dublin, and he's come back to Galway for reasons of his own. As he struggles to navigate the politics of a new police station, Maud and Jack return to haunt him. What ties a recent suicide to that death from so long ago, and who among his new colleagues can Cormac really trust? Betrayal is at the heart of this unsettling small-town noir and the Ireland it portrays. In a country where the written law isn't the only one, the ruin asks, who will protect you when the authorities can't or won't? Oh my god, fantastic. Let's look at the author and give him a little. Oh, it's a she. Dervla McTernan. There she is. She was born in Corn County Cork, Ireland, to a family of seven. She served corporate law at the National University of Ireland, Galway, and the Law uh, Society of Ireland, and practiced as a lawyer for 12 years. Following the global financial crisis, she moved with her family to Western Australia, where she now works for the Mental Health Commission. In 2015, she submitted a story for the Sisters in Crime Scarlet Stiletto Competition and was shortlisted. This inspired her to complete the novel that would become The Ruin. She lives in Perth with her husband and two children. So this is her first novel. That's awesome. Well, I will definitely read it. I'll put it in my November books to read. Very excited. Thank you so much, Bib. Bib, I love you, Bib. Okay, so there we go. I'm now going to go live stream, and then I'm going to go to my marriage counseling session. I'm only going to live stream for like a half an hour, but all right, I'll talk to you guys later. Hello. I'm back. <coughs> I meant to bring more chapstick. You guys, I went through this chapstick too, this Evolve chapstick. It's like dead. I'm like out of all chapsticks. have some more in this car somewhere. Don't fret. I have a million inside the house. I just don't have any. Like, I really don't have any more in the car. I do have so much other crap though in here that I don't need. I have two different kinds of hand sanitizer, which is so funny. And I don't know who got me this kind. This is, I can't even see the brand, but I do not like this brand, but this is what I've been using. But I have this Purell Advanced Ocean. I keep it like right down here. Are you guys like weird about hand sanitizer? Like I use hand sanitizer like all the time. Like not because I have OCD, but just because I really like my hands to be fresh and clean. Plus what's interesting about me getting sick recently is when I worked in treatment, if you work around a lot of people, like in a hospital setting, like they recommend that you wash your hands like constantly. 
and I used to wash my hands. Like they would, there was this thing that when you went to the bathroom, you would go, happy birthday to me, happy birthday. Do you guys remember that? Like you would wash your hands that way. I think that's the way that OSHA like recommends that you wash your hands so that you uh, like don't ever get sick. And I never really got sick when I worked in treatment. And even when I was sick, like I wouldn't call in sick because there was no one to do my work for me or like somebody else basically had to stop their day so that they could do my day, you know what I mean? And do group with my kids or whatever. So, I rarely ever called in sick back in the day. And then when I got diagnosed with epilepsy, I was like, if I ever have to, you know, take extended period of leave, I wanna have my sick time accrued. So when I left working there, I had accrued like six week of six weeks of sick time, which I didn't get paid for any of. Whichever you know, everybody else that just took their sick time, whatever, did get paid for because they used it. But I didn't get paid for like six weeks of uh, accrued sick time, which I thought was total bullshit. But but now I work whenever I want. I'm the one that calls the shots, so. <laughs> Oh well, I guess, right? It is so cold outside, you guys, tonight. It is 45 degrees. Let me tell you what happened. Um, so, Alex and I went, but with, blah, 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 both went to our marriage counseling session. We had a great counseling session tonight. It was really, really good. Um, we had had this like long conversation last night that probably a year ago would have escalated into like an argument, but last night ended up just being like a deep conversation of what we would identify today as like intellectual intimacy as one of the forms of intimacy. And so we were talking about that, about like how our conversation, like how our communication patterns have changed. And like we weren't really even aware of it at the time that we were having a conversation. So we had a good session tonight and then Oh, we went to Fresh Time and we both got a bunch of food. And then he made, he was gonna make a salad. He brought a whole bunch of stuff home to make a salad, but um, he had gone to Olive Garden for lunch yesterday and brought home his leftovers. And um, so he forgot that he had that. So he ate his fettuccine cheese Alfredo leftovers while I had hummus and pita chips. <laughs> And then at like 10 o'clock, when we were done, I was like, oh, I'm so excited. We're going to watch, oh, we watched Riverdale, the first episode of season two of Riverdale, which was really good. Oh my God, I love Riverdale so much. Alex is like, I don't want to watch it. I want to save all of them. And, and I was like, well, we don't have to watch it. He was like, well, I was going to save all of them so that we could like, you know, so that I could just like watch. I go, you wait, wait a second. I go, you watched the whole season so that we could watch together as a couple. And now you can watch it like... Like, you want to have them all? And then, like, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, on a week, like, wait, like, three months, and then on a weekend, have them, like, no, we don't need to do that. <coughs> like, binge it, you know what I mean? And so we watched the first episode, it was good. Do you know that, if you guys watch it, did you know that the girl that plays Betty and Cole Sprouse, who plays Jughead, are dating in real life. I think that's so cute. But, uh, uh, throat. I'm still not completely better like you guys. And I think that it's a mixture of me getting sick and then the weather change at the same time. Like, it is, like, I just looked. It's 40, it was 45, it's 44 degrees outside right now. It is cold outside. I mean, 44 degrees in Indianapolis. 32 is, like, snow weather, but, like, we're getting down there. We're, I mean, everything was frosted when I walked outside tonight. So what happened was, I was so tired, and I said to Alex, I said, oh, I'm excited, though, because American Horror Story is on. I can at least stay up for that. And then, you know, like, I'll rest for half an hour, and then I'll go do my vlog. And he goes, American War Story's not on tonight. And I go, it's not? And he goes, no. He goes, there's, it's not on. I think there's a week break or something until it's on for next week. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, I'm going to carry Boo Radley upstairs with me. I'm going to take a little uh, hour nap. So that was at, like, 9.45, 9.30. Carried Boo Radley upstairs. 
Sometimes I make him take naps with me. <laughs> Because he'll just stay down in his little house forever. But, like, if he comes up there, he loves to, like, snuggle really close to me. So, we took a nap real close together. And, um, I was telling him, I said, now, if we were out in the wilderness and we had just one blanket that we had to share between you and Tucker and Daddy and I, this is how we would do it. We were, like, real tight and close together. <laughs> do you ever do that? You ever talk to your dogs? Anyone? He didn't understand, I don't think. But, uh, <laughs> so then Alex came up to sleep at, like, midnight, and he said, can you turn your alarm off, because I had my alarm set for an hour, which, of course, I was snoozing, and I said, oh, yeah, whew, I have my, like, seat warmer on, and I also have, like, the heat in the car on, and it is, like, so hot, and all of a sudden, the cookies are done. And I turned it off, and then, like, I was holding my phone like this. <laughs> do you guys ever do that? <laughs> like, I turned it off, and I was like, okay, five more minutes. So I woke up, and it's uh, 3.02. <laughs> so I slept from 9.45 to, like, 2.45. So what is that, five hours? Yeah, five hours. So I basically got a full night's sleep. So I'm, like, wide awake now. And I have a meeting that I have to go to at 1 o'clock tomorrow, and it's two hours long, and that's all I have. And there was a possum that was running by the side of the road there. Are possums blind? Do you guys know? Like, have you ever noticed that, like, when they're, like, they're, they scurry out in the middle of the Well, first of all, they eat their family, which is disgusting. I see, you see them all over Indiana. Like, I don't know if it's just a Midwest thing or whatever, but they are all over the roads in Indiana. They must be everywhere, though, I'm sure. But they always are just like this in the road. Like, they have no idea, like, no rhyme or reason of where they're going. They always just look so confused. I'm at a light, so I'm going to Google it. Our possums... Oh my God, our possums blind comes up right away. Oh, possums, which I said, I used to call them opossums in here. People said that they're not called opossums. They are right there. See, look, opossums <clears throat> are genuinely nocturnal foraging through the night, but it is not at all unusual to see an opossum out during the daytime, especially during cold weather. They also can be seen in the day. Damn it, now I don't know if possums are blind. Ten things I didn't know about opossums. Oh, possums. Do you remember I used to say that on here? I'd say, oh, possums. And people said, it's not opossums, it's possum. And I knew it was opossum. I knew that that was right. And the reason I used to say that, two facts, okay? Number one, people ask me all the time. Hold on a second. got to figure out what the heat is doing in here. It is so hot. People used to ask me all the time, they, or people ask me all the time, they say, where does the I'm YouTube famous thing come from, okay? So there's a scene in The Color Purple where Shug is like married and everything, and her dad, who's the minister, drives by on like the, the you know, the horse and buggy, and she holds up a ring, her finger, and she goes, I was married now! Okay, well that's where it comes from. I'm YouTube famous now. That's where it, um come from because I love the movie Color Purple. I mean, it's like one of my hands down all-time favorite movies. I think the movie is such a profound and prolific study of character change over time. And I just love and the book by Alice Walker is fantastic too. So that's that. And then the second part to that is when, this is what I used to say with opossum, opossums, because she says in there that her daughter's name is Olivia, Olivia, and she says it like that, which I think that's such a pretty name, Olivia. If you guys have not seen The Color Purple, you have missed out. I use so many movie references, I don't know, like... You know, I was thinking about this today. It's interesting on my main channel because somebody commented, because you know I say, Beast! <clears throat> well, Beast is like Alyssa Edwards said it on RuPaul's Drag Race, and that's where I got it. And I really think a lot about not saying it. Because so many people are like, you stole that from Alyssa Edwards, blah, 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 whatever. Well, 
if you watch my channel, <laughs> the majority of what I say on there, like, if you know, if you don't know what you don't know is a lot, or I, I, I think not. And a lot of these different, like, catchphrases that I say, I was thinking about this, are all, like, picked up from pop culture figures that I adore, like Janis Joplin, you know, like, um, oh, you know, people like that, like, who's that? If you don't know what you don't know is a lot. But I think that's an Annie Mame phrase, you know, my memoirs, my memoirs, and things like that. So it's like, the whole thing is just like me stealing these catchphrases. Which I think is kind of, to some degree, like, what, like, don't fuck with me, fellas. I mean, that's obviously from, you know, Mommy Dearest. And, uh, I mean, they're all just points of pop culture reference, which I think is so funny. So really, when people say to me, you stole that from Melissa Edwards, what they're really saying is, I don't know any of your other cultural references except for that one. <laughs> this is so funny to me. Ugh. It sucks to be sick. I want somebody to write down. <laughs> Seriously second week of October, and then when I go, I'm never sick. I can't even remember the last time I was sick. I want somebody to write down, and I, it'll piss me off, but I don't care. Second week of October, and you ask us to write it down. <laughs> the next time I'm like, I'm so sick. I can't believe I'm sick, because somebody said that to me on, like, a comment, and I was like, whatever, but, like, I have a friend of mine, and like every time I'm sick, I'm always like, I'm never sick. She's like, I feel like you say you're never, you're, you're sick every other week, but then you say you're never sick. But like, I really don't feel like I say I'm sick a lot. I feel like I really, I feel like I say that I'm, I feel pretty healthy most of the time. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Am I deceiving myself? Do I really think I'm a sickly person? When I'm, I don't know. It's not really that deep, is it? Mm. But I'll tell you what I think, that these halls are kind of a trick. These halls right here. They kind of, for a second, make you think that your throat feels bad, but they don't really do anything but just kind of numb your mouth for a second or two. They're kind of a trick. I was just thinking about the movie Pete's Dragon, and I don't know why, the original one. Was there some song in that movie? My mom and I used to sing some song from Pete's Dragon back in the day. I haven't seen the second one, the remake. I've wanted to though. I've been like thinking a lot about death recently. Like I was talking to my counselor about that today. <clears throat> like I feel to some degree like know how to explain it. Um, like, I feel like my grief with people in my past, like, I don't think grieving is a process that ends. I think you can, I think once you lose somebody in your life, that will be what you do with them for the rest of your life. Like, I think you will grieve them, if that makes sense. Like, I don't think you just go, okay, I'm done grieving. Like, I think if, like, somebody dies in your life, you will forever grieve their, their death. It just, I just think to what capacity will you, or like, you know, how will you, and I was telling my counselor today, I was like, I've had this really weird feeling recently where I've just been like, I don't know, like in my head, like this is going to sound so like lacking sympathy, but like in my head, I've just been kind of, like I was thinking about my aunt and my mom and everybody being gone, and I was like, well, everybody just dies, like that's just kind of like life, you know, and I just kind of had this moment, like where it almost kind of scared me, where I just kind of was like, oh well, you know, and, which is so like out of the, like out of the, out of character for me, and I said that to him, and he said, what do you think, do you think that that could be a defense mechanism against you feeling like, you know, like, people in your life are abandoning you because you've had so much death in the last 10 years. So, so much loss. Because I've had so much loss in the last 10 years. And I was like, oh, wow, yeah. 
And then he was like, we were talking about like, the one relationship that I really take for granted is the one constant that has always been there, which is my relationship with my dad. You know, my dad has just been so awesome to me through the years. He's always just been there, you know? And, and how we, a lot of times, take relationships for granted that are always there, that are not going anywhere, you know? And, uh, he was like, what's interesting to me is when you talk about your relationship with your dad, it's not where you wished it was. You don't get from it what you want. But you also know what it is. And you depend upon it in the way that it is. Like, I'm very realistic about the relationship with my dad. And he was like, has that always been the case? And I said, yeah, like... <clears throat> my dad's just always been a really busy guy, you know? And so, like, if I'm going to see my dad, it's going to be because we're going to take a two-week super elaborate vacation where he doesn't touch his phone. Like, that's been my, my dad's life always. Like, if he's in town, like, that he... I mean, unless it's a weekend and he's not on call, like, he's busy. And so, we were talking about that, and, you know, he was like, I think that that transfers over into your relationship with Alex, you know? And... So he was like, I think you have, you know, strange expectations for people in your life, period. And it made me really kind of look at, like, how I do view my expectations for people in my life. Like, you know, like, I need a lot from people. But then, like, I don't tell them that I need a lot. I don't tell them what I want. I just expect them to be mind readers. And then when they fall short, I go, well, they don't really care. You know, and I was like, holy shit. Like, he pointed that out to me, and I was like, oh my god, that's so true. Like, I really do do that. You know what I mean? And what it is, is that over time, I have felt that people have abandoned me. But, like, even my mom, like, we kind of, like, processed that. He was like, well, do you feel like your mom has, like, kind of abandoned you? And I was like, after we talked about it a little bit, I go, yeah, I guess I kind of do. You know, like, I'm not mad at her. It's not like she chose to get sick and die, but sure. And so, you know, when you look at it from that point of view, it's like, um, then what I do subconsciously is I set up these high expectations for people that there's absolutely no way that they can meet so that, um, that when they fall short, I can say, well, see, I mean, you didn't really care anyway. If you had cared, you would have... If you had cared about me enough or, you know, like, if you had, you know, cared about our relationship enough, this is what would have happened. So then I just write that person off. And it, it's become a defense mechanism that I've done over the years. Does that make sense? I mean, I think as I'm saying it, I'm sure a lot of you are out there like, oh, wow, I do the same thing. You know, like... Or you keep the person around, but you complain about them to other people. Like, but they don't ever, like, they don't do their part. They don't care about the relationship. They don't care about me. And that may not be their perspective at all. Their perspective might be, I really care a lot about you. I don't know how to make you happy. It seems like nothing that I do makes you happy, right? Why are you pushing me away? When we may be sabotaging relationships and not even realizing it, you know? I mean, I can sit in here and talk all day long about how I love to have great relationships with people and blah, 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 whatever. And I'm sitting in that office today and I'm thinking to myself, I am so scared of having relationships with people because I'm afraid to get hurt by people because every ex I've ever had in my life has hurt me profoundly. You know, my mom died at a young age, affected me profoundly. You know, my aunt is gone. I mean, I've just, I've lost, I've lost, I've lost, I've lost. And so I think what I've done at this point is I've just... I'm sabotaging relationships at the expense of self-preservation. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to get that close to anybody anymore because if you get that close to somebody, they hurt you, which I don't really believe. I really don't believe that statement. I mean, when I've heard people saying that before, I'm like, no, that's crap. But, like, at the same time, I'm playing into that. Like, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. I think it's interesting. Um... My counselor is such a neat guy, and he really, really challenges me in my life, and um, I'm so thankful for him. <laughs> he was telling us that his kids, who are like one and three, one is, his daughter is going to go as a purple bunny, because she's obsessed with everything purple, that's a three-year-old, and it, the one-year-old is going as, <laughs> this is so cute, okay? 
he, like, so they're best friends with their neighbors across the street. And why I just, this green light, I'm just sitting here in a green light. Just the life of a vlogger. So anyway, and then the, the neighbor across the street and that they have both have one-year-olds. So his son is going as a sunshine and the neighbor across the street's son is going as a rainbow. <laughs> For Halloween, I love that. I think that's so adorable. But anyway, you know, like, I don't, I don't, I want people in my life. I want to have relationships with people in my life. And if that's the case, then I need to be open to that, you know? And I need to be open to looking at those changes and those behaviors that I'm doing that I may not even realize. I had this weird moment sitting in the office because we had counseling. I had counseling today individually, and then I had marriage counseling tonight. I had this moment sitting in the office tonight, and I was like, I don't know what made me think this, but I was like, what happens to us as little kids that is so fucked up that like really affects us long term? If that makes sense on uh, this police officer just turned behind me as I'm turning this, but you know, like what happens to us long term as kids that really like like when we're little little kids that makes us like respond the way that we do as adults. You know what I mean? Like you have to, I mean, I have to believe to some degree that the way that I am as an adult is a reflection of things that happened to me as a child. Like I don't think that we just become this way overnight. And so I was looking back at my childhood today and I was thinking, you know, like I don't really have that many horrible things that happened. I didn't really have that many negative things that happened to me in my childhood. I know for you guys, this is probably strange watching this in the dark, but I was just looking at it on like the, the screen of the camera and I'm like, it's really kind of pretty actually. You can just kind of, it kind of reminds me of like flying into a city like late at night or anyway. But you know, like, Really what it's about is trusting people. Well, what has had to happen to me over time, I mean, and listen, I have a lot of, sh I have a lot of shit in my life since I was a kid, but like what has really happened to me over time that has made me untrustworthy, you know, like as a kid, as an adult and whatever. And I think that says a lot about like who I was growing up and those kinds of things. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you ever think about that? Like, even just, like, things that happened to us as kids, like, with little friends, like, just little stupid things, like getting into a fight or the things that we probably think aren't really that profound, but really, if you look at them in the grand scheme of things, they probably mean a lot more to us, like little things that happen in the classroom. And, you know, I have this memory, I've talked about this in here a lot, where I can remember being in a classroom and writing like the year 1982. Like I can remember that, which I would have been 10 years old. <coughs> if I can remember that so profoundly, that moment, then that has to mean that, like, you know, other things that happened to me when I was growing up at 10 years old really had a profound effect on me as well. And, um, but then you just wonder, like, which things? And how much of it do you really want to unpack? How much of it do you really want to talk about? Or how much do you really just want to, like, live your life at some point? And go, you know what? I'm not going to understand all of it. I'm not going to know all of it. I'd rather just live my life and enjoy my life. You know what I mean? And I think that's kind of where I'm at today, but I'd also like to understand some of it. It's interesting to me. So, I don't know. Had a good day. Very introspective day, though. Like, I wouldn't want to do today every day. <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Anyway, um, and it's Spookathon, and I'm still reading, and I'm now reading... Oh, I finished the Sherry Lapina book. I talked about that. And I'm now listening to on Audible Siege by Rhiannon Freighter, which is the third book in the As the World Dies zombie trilogy. And it's very good. So, all right, you guys, I'm going to get off here and listen to my audiobook for a little bit and go to bed. So, I will talk to you later. I love you. Bye.